That's me two years ago, fresh out of college and ready for the workforce. The world is in turmoil. It always has been, but as the years go by, the degradation of humanity speeds up. It seems as if there is no hope left, but behind every dark cloud, the sun still shines. I've lived in West Virginia my whole life. I went to college here and have picked up employment here. I never expected to remain in the state when I graduated, but it's the way that it worked out. The economic situation in this country is crap. I graduated from college two years ago and took a job writing for a local newspaper. The pay isn't great, but hey, it's a job and I do enjoy it. Here in Appalachia, coal and government are king. Nothing gets me more giddy than uncovering corruption and making these local West Virginian politicians and their partners squirm. My job is to peel back the comfortable dark cocoon with every word I type. In this state, if you're not working for coal or in a government position, you're flipping burgers or working for a shit pay newspaper. America and the world is on the brink of economic collapse. But here in West Virginia, it seems as if we're always in a depression. Prescription pill addiction is at an all-time high among the poor here. But a little bit of the old isolationist, self-reliant spirit that makes West Virginia special still remains. I shouldn't complain though. I'm not rich, and neither is anyone else around here. Could be worse. I have an amazing boss. His name is Mike Lopez, and he may appear to be a lazy slacker, but he's just the type that wears t-shirts to work. And he is one of the hardest working people I know. Jesus Christ. What the hell's the matter, Mike? You haven't heard? What? What's going on? The American dollar just crashed. We're gonna be lucky to get a loaf of bread for 20 bucks. And they're talking about the UN setting up some sort of new world economic order and maybe even instituting some sort of uh, world currency. I just don't know what to think about this, man. It's some pretty heavy stuff to take when you come to work. Well, I know it's bullshit, man, but we still got a job to do, Toby, so I need you on this. I need you to go downtown, look up the local businesses, see how this is affecting them, and then also see if you can find out what the government's going to do at a local level about this, okay? Yeah, yeah sure thing, boss. Just give me, a, give me a minute to take this all in. I decided to head to the bank. It's past 10 o'clock, so anyone who has looked at the news today is aware of the economic situation. As the bank comes into view, I can already see a line of people outside of it. Excuse me, I'm with the press. Hey, I'm with the press. I'm doing a news story. Hey, we gotta yeah, tell hey, somebody. Bud. We need hey, our buddy. money. Who's paying yeah, my mortgage? George Bush is paying back the land of the line. Money? Sir, sir, I'm doing a news story here. I'm with the oh, press. Oh. I'm just trying to get in and cover a story. I'm sorry. Uh, well, tell somebody. Right. I won't withdraw the money from my account in my savings. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but the government has frozen all accounts until further notice. That's my money. That's my account, and I want to make a withdrawal right now. Ma'am. No! I worked two jobs to put food on the table. Half that money's for my kid's college fund. I've worked hard for it. It's mine. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. And that goes for the rest of you. The government has put a hold on every single account until further notice. I don't care what they've done. I want my money. Ma'am, there is nothing I can do. This isn't constitutional. It's not right. You'll be hearing from me again. Hey. Excuse me, miss. I'm doing a story for the newspaper. I was wondering if you can offer a word on this uh, now or maybe whenever you get off hey, work. Hey, look, excuse me. Can you not see there's a crisis going on? People at the bank didn't have much to say except for one-liners. Things like, damn feds, I can't believe this, and yeah, I'm pissed off. It's a disgrace. I feel the same way. The only problem for me now, though, is that I haven't really felt the effects. Hey, Mike. Toby, get your ass down the city hall. Yeah. Right now. Speech. I drive over to town hall to hear what is to happen. The local press are lined up, cameras, microphones, and the like. The address to the crowd is your regular scripted crap for the TV reporters to pick up and run for the new news. Luckily for me, 
I'd like to know someone in the mayor's office, not have my own private interview. Mr. Toby McAllen? Mayor Harper, nice to meet you. Let's have a seat. Town of business. Okay, first question. Was there ever any kind of plan or anything set up in case this happened, a plan going back a few years at all? I could never imagine this could happen. There's never been a plan for a collapse. But for a crisis, there is a plan for one. Uh, when you say plan, do you mean anything specific? What I mean, what, I, what we plan, I can't believe this is happening. I'm just asking if there's like anything specific planned for this. I mean, this isn't an act of war, or weather damage, or anything like that. The plan is to keep things from escalating. It was about 4 a.m. when my phone started ringing. We started working since 5 trying to find ways to keep this from getting out of control. Is there any kind of response from Governor Tomlin or Washington? Tomlin is going to do a live announcement at four o'clock. And Washington is doing whatever it can, just as we are doing what we can. Do you know about the food prices? I heard that meat and dairy is going to go through the roof and a loaf of bread is going to be $20. I heard that gas Lord have mercy, I can't believe it. What plan of action are you uh, taking right now? Action? For starters, since all the bank accounts are frozen, we're going to have to make sure that people are buying exactly what they need. No one will purchase more than two gallons of milk, only two dozen eggs, and enough food for the week. Until things get better, we're going to have to be strict on what we spend money on and what others are allowed to spend money on. The interview with the mayor didn't satisfy me. Feels like a hurricane is coming and there's no place to take shelter. I decided to see the sheriff and to find out what kind of precautions the police are taking. Hey, you're lucky you caught me at lunchtime. <laughs> hey, I got officers out today for sure looking for more than just speeders. I'll leave you there. You uh, want some coffee or something? Yeah, I could use some in there. That's some bad news about that old dollar collapse. Yeah, should have been at the bank earlier. Yeah, my wife was down there earlier, see if she could draw some money out. She called me, said the line wrapped all the way around the place. You have any deputies or Anything set up the bank right now? You betcha. And the troopers are in a bunch, too. And hmm. um, so you're putting any deputies at the bank, though? Well, they're patrolling to just see to it things don't escalate. But how do you feel about the feds putting a close on everyone's account? You know, I don't think they can do that. Legally. I mean, it's, it's not up to me. I just don't, uh, I just don't think they can do that, though. Of course, we, uh, we just want to try and see to it that things don't get out of hand. Do the local police have any kind of riot gear or anything like that in case things do get out of hand? Oh, nothing like that. That's why we called in the troopers. Uh, you don't think the troopers might take over? Well, no, I don't think so. I mean... No, no, I, I don't believe so. If things get out of hand, I mean, where I can't control them, well, now, they, they wouldn't be in charge. You don't know this sort of thing's never happened before. The sheriff gave a good talk about what to expect from the local police. There aren't many deputies, only 15, which is the obvious reason why he doesn't want an out-of-control situation. But it's also because he is an optimist. He believes that people are ultimately good, but knows that the animal instinct to survive will come out when people feel threatened. I was surprised to notice that food hadn't been bought like crazy. But from what I understand, people use credit cards a lot more than cash. Owners and employees were more concerned about break-ins as well as not being able to sell consumables. 
prices of already purchased bread and such by companies and or store owners wasn't going to increase until the next purchase. Only a few people in the stores were able to purchase anything, and even at that, it wasn't much. About the current situation, it's not good. I can tell you that. Yeah, we were on a lunch break. And we were trying to buy a burger, and they wouldn't even take my card. They yeah. said all the accounts were locked down. And I'm the type that always carries bills on me, so I was able to pay for that food. So what are you gonna do now? Well, we're supposed to be at work, but they let us off early. Seems like a good time to get drunk to me. We're gonna go buy a bottle of liquor. Country's gone to hell. We might as well get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Sacked. How come? Well, the suit from the Federal Media Commission came in and tried to tell me how the paper was going to run. I said, that don't fly. He said, go to hell. It's okay, man. I got family in Macon that needs me, so I guess I'm going to go there. I'll see you heading out. I don't know. I'll let you know. Toby McAllen. That in? Yeah, you better go see what he wants. Bernard Reynolds. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, Mr. McAllen, things are going to start running just a bit differently around here. I can't keep everyone, but I'm keeping those who deserve to be kept. It seems as if you're the exceptional one around here, so I'm moving you up to editor-in-chief. Pay right now is tricky, but I assure you you'll make enough to survive on Toby. Bills and things amongst the Senate are, you know, still being considered, so we'll see how it turns out. Pay right now is something that everybody's concerned about. You'll do all right, Toby. Being able to survive, you know, you ain't got to worry about that. You're a great reporter, which is why you've been placed at the top. But I cannot stress to you enough that only the facts that be reported here. Do you understand? What about opinion pieces? Yeah, they can run, but I want no funny business. In these uncertain times, anything that is over-exaggerated could, you know, cause civil unrest. Nothing like that is to run. Just remember one thing, Toby. In these trying times, people would kill to be in your position. Having a raise right now helps. Even though I was only making 20000 a year a little over four hours ago, I still haven't felt the dollars crash, at least on a desperate level. Reynolds told me that technically, I'd still be making 20000 a year, though my raise is supposed to bump me up to 30000 a year. The other 10 of my 30000 was to go to the government. Parasites. What else should I expect? I meet up with Mike at a local bar in town. It's kind of like it always is, a bunch of Joe Schmoes complaining about mundane life, but now they actually have something to rant and holler about. So, uh, what do you think of this guy Reynolds? I think he's got something up his ass, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know. So, when are you heading out? I'm looking at tomorrow. Pretty much got everything packed up anyway. You got any work lined up? Nah. No, but something will come along. Look, Toby, I'm gonna miss you, bro. I miss you too, Mike. Look, Toby. Don't let this guy Reynolds stifle you, man. You're a thinker, so don't sedate yourself. I thought about asking Mike what he meant, but on some subconscious level, I knew what he meant. Don't give in. Don't be afraid. Report everything exactly how it is. Having the new position as editor in chief is a nice change of pace. It's still a bit empty around the office since so many people were fired or quit, but it's nice to know that the paper is still up. But for those without jobs, it's bad. Bread is $25, an 11 ounce bag of coffee is $50, milk 20, and a pound of chicken is 30. There were a few murders and beatings that have taken place the last few weeks. All outside stores at night, people desperate to get food, robbing those who had just purchased enough to barely get by on. This type of violence is happening everywhere. Hello? Toby. Mayor Harper, you better get down to town hall. As it may come to a shock to you as well as to me, due to the current economic situations, now I'm not being able to keep up with federal standards. I hereby resign as mayor to Mrs. Diane Lafferty. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mayor what about the money? What about gas prices? When will we see crime to higher ones? When are they going to drop? Why is it? Thank you, Mr. Harper. And citizens, as you are aware, I am Diane Lafferty. 
Like 95% of cities and towns, this one too has not been able to function like a healthy community that is part of the United States. Like other states, counties, and cities, a federal official has been placed to ensure that we get our country up and running again. Our objective is, number one, to ensure that violence is put to a stop. Number two, to ensure that our citizens receive the proper care. And number three, to get our country back on track. But we've got a long road ahead. If violence continues to grow, there will be a curfew put into place. Because of the creation of the Federal Media Commission, cable and satellite television has been replaced with federal regulated closed circuit television. There will be no more private at home viewings, but in public places only and during the predetermined times posted. We want to make sure our citizens are getting the proper information. These are trying times, and may we unite our citizens in the common good of mankind and create a new world order promoting peace, prosperity, and justice for all of humanity. Thank you. Lafferty is all about getting America back on track in her speech. Her real agenda appears to be highly restrictive, calling for at least 20 additional state troopers to patrol the streets, armed guards at all businesses, even having all businesses closing at 6 to decrease the likelihood of robberies and murders. The cynic in me likes that these people will be deprived of their cable, a wasteland on a digital box that people can't get away from, but the other part of me hates that some new authority is coming in, shouting commands. But these people won't care. Not as long as they have their opiates. I was walking on the other side of the street when a man attacked a person carrying a loaf of bread. You bastard! You bastard! I'm fucking hungry! We were all hungry, and some revel in it. The homeless have become violent, taking what they can. No one goes out at night, it seems, even though curfew doesn't begin until next Monday. The paper itself is ready to go to print and go out tomorrow morning, but I've got some criticism on the mind that people ought to hear. I have over 800 words written and the opinion piece isn't close to being finished. Truthfully, I can't consider it to be an opinions piece. That sounds too generic. This is truth and criticism, showing flaws in the movement of the belt. I'm one of the lucky few that still gets to carry a cell phone. Most people can't afford them anymore, but my job requires me to have one. People that can be of important public service get to have one, paid for by the government. The phone call was from my friend Nate. I haven't seen him for over three weeks. He was a miner, but was laid off two days ago. since the dollar's collapse, and there are still slim signs of improvement. The president met today with the Senate and had this to say. So to change Washington, you, the American people, are going to have to sustain some passion about this. And when necessary, you've got to send the right people to Washington. <sighs> Should have seen this coming. No, I did see it. I just didn't want to believe it. Sorry about your job, mate. How's the paper? Well, that's good. Yeah, I've been reading some of your articles, and you know me, I never read them much newspapers, but that's all you got anymore. I've been thinking about starting an op-ed. I actually want to consider it to be a type of educated criticism about what's been going on. I think someone needs to. You ever hear of InfoWars or PrisonPlanet.com? No. 
The guy who made these uh, had a couple sites that went into investigative journalism. The government must have shut these sites down. I haven't seen them for weeks. Can't get them on the radio either. Kind of like the Stone song, Doom and Gloom. Uh, you care if we can uh, watch any of these? Yeah, go for it. Here for another? Yeah, thanks. Well, nobody ever reported on this? None of the big media outlets. I think I need to finish my op that. Should go do it. But hey, listen, uh, do they ever restrict anything you do? Not really. This commission's guy Reynolds said he didn't want any kind of funny business. He didn't want any kind of propaganda. But I've got something to say, and Reynolds is never around anyway. Well, what have you got to say? What I've seen, how the machine grinds the people and continues to grind them. You know how the homeless become violent, things that could probably actually be done to stop it. After seeing these, I really think it's time I finish my op-ed. Have you heard anything about the militia in the area? No. Well, I was thinking about joining them. Some buddies from work were talking about it and they're, they're almost like Masons now with secret meetings and all and I don't even know how many people they have. They're not planning to watch an attack, are they? Well, from what I know, they're on the defensive right now. Uh, you know, people get pushed down and pushed around so much, that, you know, something's bound to give and you, before long, uh, we're going to have to defend ourselves. Nathan, thanks for the beer and the movies and the inspiration. I really got to get back on my op-ed. Hope your job picks back up, man. It won't, but I'll be just fine. I've worked late before, but now I feel it's a necessity. The trouble is that by doing so, I'm breaking curfew. That in itself is a thrill. Some of what I've had to write lately is just dribble, nothing of use. I'd much rather than writing dialogue for a porn flick. But these op-eds, uncensored, unsupervised, full of truth, journalism getting to the public, and from the letters I've received from the locals, the pieces are truly promising. I've managed to get four op-eds out. Word around town is that people have taken quite the fancy to them. Oh look, Bernard Reynolds, coming down from his elaborate castle to make sure all is tip-top and running well. May I speak to you in private? Yeah. Mr. McAllen, this is my boss, Mark Shepard. Please take a seat. Toby, as I told you when I made you editor-in-chief, I want no funny business. This is exactly the type of thing that could cause civil unrest. Do you understand? This thing has happened all over the U.S., more so in North Carolina. There's been people rioting in the streets, terrorists attacking federal buildings, people just wanting to get their old lives back. It's not that easy. Mr. We Reynolds, if I may, Toby, our job is to make sure that people remain stable and calm. Articles like yours are prone to causing problems. Now, you're a good writer and, for the most part, a good employee. So we're letting you off with a warning. But do not let us catch you writing this extremist drivel again. Toby, it appears you've been having to work late the past few days, so I'm going to recommend you lay off the op-eds. There's a new policy set in place. No one stays over past 5. The paper has to be out by 5 o'clock. And if it's not out by 5 o'clock, if it has to go later, only one person is to be in here, and that's the printer. Do you understand, Mr. McAllen? I got it. Good. Toby, any more fear-mongering, any more extremist rants, and I assure you, you will not like the consequences. 
We're here to help, so please, let us help. They have no right to harass me. No right. I have lied about nothing and have committed no crimes. But policy has changed. Anything that may cause panic was blacklisted. Anything that criticized the government was blacklisted. The best I've been able to write has been nothing more than hopeful plans that the government has. No news, only plans. I couldn't publish a story about a store owner who committed suicide because he couldn't support his family. One of my writers had to settle for writing that the suicide had just simply died. A 200 word article, a waste of ink. Refused to fire on the protesters. Other members of the National Guard are leaving their posts as well. As of now, the governor of North Carolina is still on standby as to whether he will bring in the Marines. Back to you, Mick. Yes, things are truly getting chaotic out there. New York City is still suffering from similar riots, and the biggest one in Greensboro only ended in bloodshed, with over 300 people arrested and over 1,000 dead and injured. But for those of you listening, we've got Led Zeppelin coming your way with all of my love. Coffee went up. It's now $150. I have enough grounds left for one whole pot of coffee, so I pass on it. I think about writing an opinions piece. But I know it won't run. I go over to a bottle of liquor. When I bought this, it cost $50. Now it's $500. That's how we want to drink, but we just can't afford it. Sirens from my dream are still ringing in my ears. I make two cups worth of coffee. I used to have a diet that consisted of two eggs, fruit, turkey, bacon, and oats. Now I am down to one egg and bread that I had to make myself. Though I shouldn't complain, most people are only living on 1,000 calories a day by eating MREs that the military has been giving out. Riddles held a meeting today to tell us that the paper would be bi-weekly due to the price of ink. Even at that, the amount of pages is to be cut as well. Despite our drastic change in living, the staff seem happy, or maybe just satisfied to have a job. Sheriff Renner resigned his position today. Sheriff, why'd you resign? This job's not for me anymore. I'm old and deserve some retirement. Well, who's gonna replace you? I don't know. I'm supposed to meet with that Lafferty woman sometime today. She's not the one making you resign, is she? No. No, that's my decision. Sheriff, it sounds like you're holding something back. Look, Toby, if I had something to say, I'd say it. I like you. I like your stories. That's my problem. I believe in you. I'm just not fit for this job anymore. 
Do you have anything that people might need you? I thought you were doing a story. That was a question. I have a feel like you're trying to back me into a corner. I'm just not fit for this job anymore. There's news of food prices to go down. Locally run government farms are to begin in May. Produce is to be rationed still. At least up until July. And you figure by June is when this might be able to be worked on? Right. Um, maybe late June that all this area here, uh, back passed into the woods actually and even in this area over here will be made available so people can start coming in uh, start farming producing crops and so we can uh, you know so they can produce some food yeah how many farmers right now do you think you have actually coming out here to work uh, right now we have about 10 to 15 that are actually already signed up um, but we're expecting more of course you know it's early in the season um, we're hoping to maybe get uh, about 40 or 50 by the by planting time Okay, and how many acres do we have out here that it's actually going to be used for the crops? Well, it's part? going to be more than you can see right now. Uh, these trees are going to be uh, taken out, these up here as well, so we're looking to have maybe 70 to 80 acres altogether. Okay, and you mentioned something earlier about genetically modeled seeds. Well, yeah, they've been modified, designed to you know perform well in this environment with the soil, uh, the weather that we're expecting, uh, also to be more resilient to or resistant to you know bugs, diseases, and that sort of thing. Um, now that will be controlled, so that you know the farmers will be given a certain amount uh, that they can plant, uh, and then at the end, of, you know after harvest, uh, they won't be allowed to you know keep any seeds uh, since that is a uh, you know commercial investment. Uh, it's been patented and, you know, will be controlled. But otherwise, you know, they were free to use those seeds for this growing period. It's nothing more than a story to get the people hopeful. More PR than actual journalism. The elderly are to be moved to some FEMA hospital in another county. Some may even be moved out of the state. They began removing them five days ago. The hospital is now to be used as a barracks for the Army's 1st Battalion, 303rd Infantry Regiment, M Company. Some of those out here are protesting because they want their loved ones back. Others are upset because of the tyranny in the military moving in. It is illegal to drive a car, and people must use public transport. The paper just ran this week, so it won't run again until next Wednesday. I didn't have much to go on about the elderly being moved. It was nothing more than a 350 word article with the riot kept shallow and sugar coated. The company's captain has yet to get back to me. All those protesters getting beaten and arrested. More could have been added to my story. Hey, Toby, did you hear about the train being hijacked? No. A buddy of mine told me about it. It was a military train, and when it was three hours late getting to its destination, and no one could contact the conductor, a chopper was sent out to locate the train. And get this, it was only a mile away from its destination. Where did this happen? Right here, just yesterday. I mean, it was a military train, you see, and all of the food, the gear, the armaments, all gone. No one was injured, I mean, there were only three people on the train, but still. Is anyone covering a story on this one? No. You want to cover the story? Go ahead and cover the story. You know, make it as long as you want to. We have a whole week, yeah, we have a whole week until Wednesday, so make it as long as you want to. Probably the only thing news really we've run for at least three or four weeks anyway. I had a new check and a couple of rep rations, plus a new one, so I decided to head to the bar. Is your car, man? Yeah. You got six beers left. What can I get you? Uh, I like one of the Pal L's. All these people, just happy to be out to drink and watch television. Maybe shoot the bull as well. But just looking at their faces, I can see that the fun times are gone for them. The bar is an old memory, and I'm sure the majority of their friends can't even get in for a drink. You want another one back there? Yeah, sure. Thanks.
This was one incident that I couldn't let go. I crank out three stories on an op-ed. All the while thinking of something that Hunter S. Thompson had written. There is no need for the president to be smart. He can arrest the chief of the mafia and sell the Washington Monument to Arabs and nobody will question his judgment. Sheriff, I'm not sheriff anymore. Those people were shot down. They shot them down. They didn't do anything. Shouldn't. What's his name? The new sheriff. Hear about this? He won't return my calls. I never believed crime could get this bad. During all my years in law enforcement, pills and drugs were bad. My officers never killed anybody. You know, when word came down from the top that we were supposed to do this or that, if I didn't believe in it, we didn't follow it. They did that uh, gun grab two years ago. I knew that was wrong, and I said so. Will we say nothing now? This won't stand. When people hear about this, they, they won't stand for this. Yeah, it appears that nothing will. From all the protests I've heard of, folks will be outraged. They won't allow this to stand. Have you heard about a militia in the area? Toby. I'm not sure now's the time to mention a militia. Paper came out today. I'm anticipating its reception at work. I've noticed a few people reading it. Maybe they're optimistic for good news. Maybe the price of five fifty for a paper hasn't swayed them. Yeah, Toby, this one has a lot of prudent information in it. You really know what's happening, right? Toby, you're fired. Mr. McAllen, I warned you that there would be consequences for your actions. No, wait, I've got freedom of speech. I never lied about anything that was published. No, you've got no rights other than the ones I give you. Damn it. Now, you can leave now, or you can be escorted out. Do take care, Mr. McAllen. It's morning. I have no work to do, and it's one of those days that you just want to beat someone to death. While eating my breakfast and slowly drinking my one cup of coffee, I look at my generation of swine book. In three hours, I need to be at my community service gig that they slap me with. I read for one hour, shower, and then leave to walk to the transit. For some reason, I felt the urge to run.
What's your story here? Uh, I'm Terry McGowan. I, I used to write for the local newspaper. Uh, I got fired just today for writing articles that the, the feds thought were treasonous. I was leaving this morning to go to this community service thing. He was outside my door. I had to run through my bathroom window. Now I'm here. Toby McCallum, I've heard of you. I've read some of your stuff. So what you need, sanctuary. Here's your salvation. <laughs>